Tan 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 tan, 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 tan tan tan. Action. Alrighty. Um. It's, it's, this promises to be another very lit episode And I'm sure you can see from the branding here We're at Keg and Fig Tree And oh, The cold though The what girl? The cold Oh, <laughs> I said the cold though <laughs> And I, I have to thank uh, What's her name? The lady serving us? Felistus Felistus for the fire that she brought uh, and This brazier thing is keeping really warm and our guest here today uh, is saying she's not affected by the weather here because what she's experiencing here is nothing compared to what she left in America. This is like summertime in America, so it's all good. She doesn't even need the brazier, nothing. And, uh, well, speaking of keg, we're here on a Wednesday. It's ladies' night. So any Wednesday that you feel like going out, keg is a place to be. Ladies, uh, what's this? Ladies' night with keg and fig tree. So ladies, enjoy 25% off all cocktails and platters every Wednesday from 18 to 21 hours. Beatrice, welcome to that Z podcast. And if you ever need to chill with your lady friends on a Wednesday night, keg is where you should bring them. Definitely, I'll be here. They should be lady. <laughs> 25% off all cocktails and platters. Welcome to that Z podcast. And uh, my name is K Plus. I'm the other guy. The other guy. The other short guy, Elson. Don't, 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 don't call me fucking short. <laughs> I, lo- I loved uh, what we did on social media today. But what I did, uh, uh, attacking your height and people taking it so personal. You know, people actually came to my inbox telling me not to attack you that way. <laughs> people don't know how we joke. And a, a lot of people took it seriously and thought... I have no idea. And see, this again speaks yeah. to ex- like what I always say, yeah. which is, if I make fun of you for dropping out of college... <laughs> And why, I make, why, and I make why fun would, of your height Right yeah. w- Why would anybody Take offense on my behalf People came to my inbox And said No you shouldn't uh, You know talk about a person's uh, Somebody called it a wh- no, Not a deficiency Are you, are, are you Sort of like a disability Are you body shaming me <laughs> <laughs> Are you body shaming yeah, me Yeah without shame But, but you're a though. short guy So Anywho No I'm not actually That much shorter than you Come to think of it Yeah but I, Which begs the question Why are you insecure About your height then I, I don't get it I think it stems from my days in, You know how when niggas want to attack you yeah. They look for just that one thing <laughs> I think so this comes from like my days in high school Oh crap so everybody around you was taller than you Right but So, so I, was, I wasn't sure Just everybody around was, me was tall Right And they sort of um, created an insecurity Which is ah, not supposed to be there In the first place my Speaking guy. of insecurities Our guest today Beatrice Monster Beatrice Why um, does she have a lot of insecurities? No, no, no. I'm about to ask something that I, I wonder... <laughs> that's a crazy segue. If, sorry? That's a crazy segue. <laughs> oh, starting with insecurity. You said, speaking of insecurities, our guest pictures. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm leading somewhere with this. I'd like to see... You brought up this. something. And before I come to uh, something that you brought up a few weeks ago, I'd like to talk about something that you posted today. My wife brought this up on the, on the drive here. <laughs> And she spoke about oh, Beatrice. Where's your wife? Face? She's right behind you. Hey, your husband is very handsome. You did a very good job. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what was I saying again? Oh yeah, yeah, on the on the drive here. So my wife brings it up. Says, oh, Beatrice is in town, and she says she's cleaned up today, and she's visiting everyone who said she was never going to make it in life. Imagine that. Wow. <laughs> did you visit these people today? I'm doing it tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm even buying uh, gift packs. For everybody who said door. you're never yeah, going to make yeah. it. Who are these people who said you're never going to make it? No, I think mean, when I was going through a hard time. I, some of my relatives, some of my friends, whoever. I... <laughs> you're going to visit these people one by one? Yeah. Wow. And what are, what are you going to say to them? Nothing. Just say thank you. You're my motivation. They motivated me. <laughs> Thanks for telling me I'll never make it. Yeah. Here's an iPhone. What, what are you giving them in the, in the gift bags? Yeah. What you, uh, what's in the gift bags? Probably. <laughs> what is that? Mm. What do they go? Fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> I like her. <laughs> Acting a wise lady, lady, lady. <laughs> Fireworks. Yeah. Wow. This is interesting. Anyway, today is an exciting day for us, and that's that podcast. And we have on the show 
a woman of versatile talent and she's dominating the space of content creation in Zambia. She's a US based Zambian influencer, fashionista, and entrepreneur. The lovely Beatrice Mwansa. Welcome to That's the Podcast once again. And, you know, we are so excited to have you on the show. And I was glad when we're talking behind the scenes, you mentioned you actually watched us from America and you've been spreading the word. And we're hoping this interview, you know, give us a better understanding of your life, your journey. And we hope to debunk some rumors about you from social media. <laughs> um, I'd like to start with, you've already spoken about, you know, people who said you're never going to make it and how you're going to dress up clean tomorrow and visit them one by one. I'd like to know more about, you know, before life happened the way it's happening now for you in the Grand Rapids of Michigan, what was it like for you growing up in Kalulushi? Just, maybe just a brief history as before we get into, you know, the juice of Beatrice Monster, the juicy stories of Beatrice Monster. Okay, first yeah. of all, I'd like to thank you for having me and I'm sorry that I'm super late. <laughs> We thought being in America would have taught you time management, but hey, yeah, I know. That you. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. But yeah. okay, I was born and raised in, uh, you know, Copper Belt, Rwanda. Like a town, but I'm gonna like get filia. That's where I was born. Like a town, like what I So so that's where yeah. I came from. I think from there I moved to Blangrilo Market. Stayed there for a little bit. Then my mom died, and my dad probably died too. You know, probably they did die. Yeah. <laughs> when I was like uh, probably a teenager. Like 14, mm. nine, 14, nine years old, I lost both of my uh, parents. Wow. Then moved to Copper Bell, not Copper Bell, to Lusaka, then Lusaka. I was on grade nine in Lusaka. I think it's in, there's a school, I forgot it, in Chilenge somewhere near yeah, Chilenge yeah. Police. So I used to live in Chilenge Police. From there, did my grade nine, uh, Nasa passed about it, but no sponsorship. So I just ended up at, started working as a waitress. Yeah. Then one day I started to like a <laughs> wait, wait, wait. In grade nine, you're working as a waitress? Yeah. After I passed grade nine to go to grade 10. Wait, when, because I, I know in Zambia it doesn't quite work out that, you know, you're doing both a waitressing job and you're no, also. No, after. School. You, you know, dropped out of school. Yeah, I wrote like grade nine. Yeah. Then in Delo, in Delo, like grade 10, I'm about to work to you know, Delo, like Oh, while you're home. waiting for your grade 10 results, yeah. I started working in a, yeah. in a restaurant. Yeah. And that's where you met this white guy. Yeah, probably yeah. after na- my results, yeah, I said, but then I didn't, I didn't go back to school. So I just ended up working and dating someone. I know you just didn't date. You married this guy. No, not the one. It's not the one you got married yeah. to. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's, 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 it's common knowledge that you dropped out of high school. At what point does this happen? It happened once I passed, like, grades. 10, like to go to grade 10 yeah. then I didn't have no finance and then I was like okay if I suppose to myself in college how am I gonna eat <laughs> so it's either I got some roof on my shoulder or something so yeah. I had to you know start doing jobs and whatever so once from there I think it was after probably two years yeah it was after two years that's when I had like a boyfriend from there I then met someone that's when I left Zambia so high school, you don't finish that. You, no. you you find a boyfriend. He takes you to America. You're not married at this point. I was not married. I, yeah. The guy that I found was uh, basically in here in uh, Zambia. Yeah. But it was a you uh, what is it? Italian Italian ambassador by then. Yeah. And then I didn't get married to him. I ended up getting married to someone from US. Wait, he was Italian ambassador. Yeah, but I ended up marrying someone from US. Oh, well. You left Zambia. You went to Italy. No, nope, I was just here. Oh, just here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what, I'm trying to understand. Well, it's basically I was cheating, dating two guys at the same time. I'm <laughs> <laughs> trying really to understand. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so much is happening in such a short space yeah, of time. Yeah, I was yeah. basically cheating. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Gotta love the honesty on this one, eh? It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so. You're cheating, but then again, you moved to America with which guy now? And who? who uh, the you, younger and, one. And which one of the two do you end up marrying now? Uh, the younger one. None of them. None of them? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so which one do you move to America with? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, a little confused The American here. one. That's the uh, younger one. That's how I end up moving to America with. I got married. Then from there, yeah. when I got there, yeah. I realized that in America, if you don't have high school diploma, you don't have no paperwork like... You know, bachelor's degree. Yeah. Life can be hard there. 
So that's when I started to like ask for my parents, no, my auntie. No, I call my parents to yeah. send me like documents here. So they sent me my grade nine uh, documents. Then from there, I actually went back to high school. Well, married. So I was going to high school, well, married, completed high school. Yeah. And once I completed high school, I enrolled into university. Um, before you know, before we get into your education and all that, I'm, I'm a little stuck on the marriage part. So you're cheating on these two guys, but you end up marrying the younger guy who takes you to America and whatever you get married. I'm trying to understand. Did you marry this guy for love, or are you just flattered by the idea of what marrying a wealthy white that? guy? No, no, <laughs> it's going somewhere. It's leading into the next question. That's why I'm asking this. Did you marry this guy out of love, or it's just flattered by the idea of marrying a wealthy white guy? Both. He wasn't. He wasn't rich. So you see how not stupid that so question it, was. He was not rich. So it was not yeah. because he was money. He <laughs> was not rich. So it was what you call medium in US. That's what they call medium. You know, kind of lifestyle. Not rich. Not poor. Just right in the medium. So, so here's what I'd like. So I up until last night, I never heard of you. Because you are a guy. <laughs> yeah, but because I'm a guy, I should hear of you. You got pretty big boobs. I oh my god, are you being boobs. flatly? You suffer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't hear what you said there. But, but so, I, I'm gonna learn about you now mm-hmm. as we talk, right? I. Kalinga sent me your page on, on, on Facebook. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't gone through it. I prefer to get to know you as I speak to you. Then that way, I don't have any preconceived notions. So, purely based off what you have just said. Uh, you are working as a waitress, and you are you start dating this Italian ambassador. Was he an ambassador then, when you started dating him? He didn't tell me that he was an ambassador until after some time. <laughs> okay, so you're dating one guy, and you start dating another one, both white guys. Mm-hmm. Coincidence, or you deliberately said I'm gonna date? It happened white guy. naturally. So it was just a coincidence. Yeah. Okay. It happened naturally. I was and not you met these guys at the restaurant that you were working. Yeah, and sometimes I'll go out with my friend and I meet some. So how did you meet the, uh, the Italian dude? Uh, the Italian when I went out with my friend, but the one that I got married to was through his brother where I was working. His brother just liked me. His uh, brother liked you? Yeah, his brother liked me. He was like, hey. You're, you're just like a white guy magnet, It, it was huh? like, Wait, I so got my, bro- my, my brother in US. Give me your number. He gave him your so number. So his brother liked you for himself or for his brother? His brother. And that's how he gave his brother the number. And was the brother married or dating? The one that was in US, in here? Yeah. No, that one was married already. So you didn't think of cheating with him as well? No, he was connecting me to his brother. I was I was keeping my tail folded. But you didn't know his brother. His <laughs> yeah. brother could have well, turned out to But he introduced me to yeah. his brother actually right away. Like we said, me and his brother started talking. So that by then there was no WhatsApp. There was nothing. It was just like maybe he would call me. He would send email pictures. Yeah. Then over a year, like we talked... Back and forth until we came to Zambia after one year and then we got married. How far back was this? Two zero two zero zero nine, yeah. Two thousand and nine. Mm-hmm. So you start talking to this guy in America and how long were you guys talking? One year. For a year. And at what point did the story of you going to America come up? You just ask me if you want like I want to marry you. And this is before you met? Mm-hmm. So you do yeah. not okay, so so then you say wow. yes. Of course. <laughs> okay. You've never met this guy before. Yeah. And he proposes online. You say yes, and it happens just like that. Yeah. You have no idea wow. what you're walking into. No. It's a but I knew his brother, though. His brother was so working here. So you trusted these guys so much, you accepted a marriage proposal. You got a plane ticket to America. And I didn't get a plane ticket. He yeah. came here first. He uh. came here in Zambia. He was in Zambia for one month. Then he left. Uh-huh. Then afterwards, I followed. I think no. any, any, any young girl watching this should not... Follow your advice, yeah. So in an age of human trafficking, I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. So no, well, his brother was working for like the NGO. So there's there's one people that I trust, and that was after enough. I knew him. And that's enough. For that you was guys. enough for me. I take a leap of faith. If I didn't do that, would I be here by now? <laughs> wow. This is sometimes how you miss opportunity. You are like, I'm too afraid to do things. Me, I'm not. I like to do things that I'm afraid of. That's uh, risking on a very. A epic level, man. But then again, <laughs> I know that that marriage lasted like what five years. Yeah, it lasted five years. Um, any kids? No kids. Th- that five years. How how would you describe that five years though? Well, I got into I, after I finished high school. I told him I want to go to university. Yeah, he was again I said, and I 
I'm a very ambitious person. So, and I don't take any no from a guy. If a guy, I tell him I want to go to school and he's not against it, it's either him or education. So that's how I ended up like, so okay, I'm gonna go my way. Okay. But we're still friends, we still talk up to now, but just. So, what was his issue with you going to university? Mostly he knew the course, the course, he said probably, hey, you're going to end up getting more money than me because the course I was going for was yeah. paying good. Then you find someone who makes money, the same money as you. Then I was just thinking like, that's crazy. Okay. What, what, what did he do for a living? Ah, uh, he was, a, what is it? Machinist. A machinist? Yeah. Okay. Ah. So that's like, uh, in America, that's like what? Cheap labor jobs and you're going to make what? Tons? Low? No, it's kind of like, uh, what is it? What do machinists do? They make uh, certain machines for stuff. their cars. You know, where you can go by the machine and then like, let's say, I don't know how to explain it. It's like they make, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like for Ford Motors, I know that's where uh, they were making machinists for them. Then they make all like the parts there from the plant and then they send it there. Yeah, I know yeah. machinists make what? Bolts, pieces of uh, machines mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, so yeah. if. And in America, it's not that lots of money, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So his insecurity stems from the fact that he knows what a cybersecurity expert is going to make. And yeah, but that I, I was him. going for a doctor actually. Oh, doctorate in cybersecurity. No, I was going f- just to become a med- med- oh, medical doctor. That's my first uh, option, right. yeah. No, because I know you end up studying cybersecurity as well. Yeah. Um, because I think the first time I ever got to hear of you was election uh, day last year. <laughs> Your face was everywhere when I remember the government blocked our WhatsApp conversations and you popped up on Facebook like almost everybody shared. Even I think the biggest pages shared your advice to, you know, uh, cr- do you create? I, I don't know much about uh, VPNs. You're a computer yeah, expert. VPN. Yeah. Do you join? What, what, what do you do with VPN? No, you just use a VPN. Use a VPN. Yeah. And you, you sort of walked us through how to get our, you know, internet working on our phones again, our WhatsApp and whatever working through oh. VPN. <laughs> how do you end up now from medicine into cybersecurity? How, how is this transition happening? Well, what happened is... Um I was married and then trying to tell my husband I want to go to school and he's not with it. So I was like, I'm going to, okay, if you're not okay with me going to school, we all end up going to divorce. So he's like, I'm okay with it. I'm like, I'm okay with it. Then when I was getting divorced, I just wanted to walk away. You know, because he started like, oh, I'm the one that brought you here. Okay, you can have the house, you can have the car. I'm just going to take my shit and get out. So that's what I did. So I started working at night, like working yeah. in a factory, literally like, you know, less paying job just so I can make it. And at the same time, I was going to like uh, school in the morning, In mm. you know, when what you are going, f- yeah, you know, in going for labs, like medical labs, that takes a lot of concentration. So you're doing medicine? Yeah, at first. Then, you know, working at night and then in the morning going to classes. I was sleeping in class and I was not constrained. So I had to find a different, like different career that I'll find that will pay me the same almost as a doctor yeah. but things that I can do at home on my own like create a computer lab at my at home you know remote con- remote DAO and all that so at cyber security in the pay range I got interested and that's how I got in and I dropped the other course so what wow. did you do cyber security with with, with what institution uh, Davenport University Okay, so so what did you study exactly? I studied cyber security. Okay. Specialized in information assurance. Okay. So if a bank got hacked, um, where I work, if they got hacked, I got to go there and find out how they got hacked, who, where. And before they got hacked, I got to find out, I got to make sure that they don't get hacked. And if they do get hacked, I have to stop them before they get hacked. I did something similar. I did Cisco. Cisco, okay. Yeah, I did CCNA and CCIE. Familiar with that? Yeah. You have to know all those before you can become cyber security. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I was too lazy to keep going. And the fact that the certification you have to, it expires. So you have to keep redoing it. Every is, year. Yeah. So the first five years of my career was software development and, and Cisco. The money was good. Cisco, cool. But I hated Europe though. Why? Okay, I'll leave the first reason out. What well, was the racism? I don't like white people. <laughs> then you'll be the racist one. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, and then I was uh, thinking but, you but, were but, a victim of racism, <laughs> not but, the other way around. No, no, I was the aggressor. Um, I, I took most of their women, so they didn't like me. 
I, I I hated the weather I hated the food So I decided You know what F it There's not enough money That these guys would pay me And I think similar I think you I don't know if it's the same way In America But if you are An expat uh, And you've got Like a minimum Of a diploma Or a degree And if you get a job There's There's a mandate of the minimum amount of money that you're meant to get. Was that the same in America as well? Yeah, like the one I remember when I first started, the minimum was set, then after some years, then the amount changed, then once, and also they were considering certification that you had, and also they were considering like how many years you put in. Right. So it's all depends, they got minimum, how much when you start getting in, like entry level. And they've got people with experience. What, what, was, the, what was the entry level, Salah? I'm trying to... Entry level is 60,000. A year? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Look, yeah. coming in, again, the, the little that I heard about you, um, and the more that I talked to you now, because remember I said I did not know about you. I, I heard about you for the first time yesterday. I had a preconceived notion of who I thought you might be. But the more that I'm talking to you now, the more I'm taking a liking to you, so I'm hoping... The same trajectory. You might like me. You might hate me. You might be in that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping the same trajectory uh, remains because my bullshit meter is like really low. You all right there? I am not. Go, please. Can you move this far from me, please? I'm burning up in here, man. Um, not, not too far away. Just like maybe thirty centimeters away. From, Actually, yeah, that, bring it, bring it, bring, bring yeah, it here. Put, bring it here. I think just put it, put it behind us, yeah. All right, cool. So you spoke about, you know, when uh, any hacking goes on, uh, you're the person they call. So I'm trying to understand. Um, no, I think you've already answered that. We can move on to your social media. You are by far, no, not really that far, but you're one of the most followed people in this country. And not only in this country. I mean, even in America, you've got followers. You've got following all across Africa. And, you know, and I, I think you're one of the most impactful influencers on social media. And this has gained you fans not only in Zambia, like I stated, but America, you know, Europe as well. Quite impressive. How did you, how did you become a social media influencer? How, how did you get to that? It all started with, I think, on my personal page. Like, I was just like, my yeah. face. I was just talking. Like, eh, I'm, I'm very talkative. I think by then I was in college where I was talking about sugar daddy, sugar daddy topics. <laughs> then I found out there was an audience who wasn't interested in that topic. So, yeah. and I was just like, if I have a topic that nobody wants to talk about it, I'll talk about it. So my my personal page started growing. Then yeah. I ended up opening a opening a person like a public page on Facebook. I think it was a month after I opened it, I gained like thirty thousand. Then Facebook uh, asked me if like you are one of the people that we would like to get on uh, what is Facebook creators. Mm. So by then, uh, within one month, I joined like one of the people to join Facebook creator stars. Which is like, oh, yeah, we're going to give you some money there and there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> then joined it. And from there, because I was one of the people, like, few that they invited when they started, they pushed me further. So I think that Facebook had something to do with it. Because I remember when I first they came, I only had, like, 30,000. But after yeah. the moment I signed up, yeah. I could see they were pushing my videos, like, where, all yeah, all over. Like, yeah. just, like, all over scattered. I'm trying to understand. We're encouraging in this video. We're encouraging people to get sugar daddies, or what? What I do is I talk about my experience, the cons, the bad, the good. Off. Everything. Sugar daddy dating, normal dating, everything in life. <laughs> I always remind people there's every every there's two sides of the coin. Okay, yeah. when you toss a coin, something with being a sugar baby. There's good side and there's bad side. Yeah. So I talk about it because someone doesn't want to talk about it. So what's the good side of being a sugar baby? Ah. Huh? What's the good side of being a sugar baby? Money, being spoiled, flying private jets. That's good. You're living that life? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm. That's the good side. Yeah? I know this. you're itching to bring something out here, Elsa. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's bullshit, though. What, being a sugar baby? Mm. Why? Like, I always say, don't live in anybody's pocket. Well, oh, what she, about she, me? Yes, yeah. from now I want to become a sugar mama. <laughs> yeah, she says yes from now. She wants to be a sugar mama. So yeah, same thing. I still, yeah. I still say to whoever you're gonna be. So you are very opinionated. Where you don't like other people's opinion. No, I didn't say I don't like your opinion. Eh. I'm just saying you listen. Do you? I don't. I don't really mind people that choose the path in life that they choose. I, yeah, I, 
I just have a problem with the people that do not work for what they have. You know, you know what I, what I do? Mm-hmm. I'm someone who I like to analyze the situation. Mm-hmm. Look at it. I was going to university alone, going to a university, private university, one of the most expensive universities back in, yeah. in Grand Rapids. Okay, do you think all alone there with no family I would have done it? Nah, I got to have some backup plan. And if I didn't have that, believe me, there's no way I would have gone to where I am. Wait, so the, the backup plan being just finding sugar daddies? Or? Well, sugar daddies, they got to pay for my education. Uh-huh. How, how many did you go through? Uh, I mean, your, your education was what, what, four years? Four years, yeah. Four years. Wow. Do you have any kids? No. If you had a daughter, would you be okay with her having a sugar daddy? If she's grown up and she wants to do what she want to do in life and I can't control her, she can do it. I'll tell her, though, no, use protection. There is HIV, there's STDs, so you can get okay pregnant. If she's doing it the right way. Was- I'm not going to tell her what not to do. Because every time my parents told me what not to do, I did it privately. So <clears throat> that's why I would say if she's a grown up person and she want to do things instead of me controlling her what to do, I'll tell her, look, what you're doing you can get this and this and this. This is what you have to do prevent yourself. Mm. Better, it's better I watch what she's doing than me being like, okay, I don't want, don't do this. Believe me, nine nine percent when you tell a child, don't do this, don't do it behind your back. Do you? Did you follow the OJ case? Yeah. You did. Do you, Do you know why he killed his wife? I don't care. Say again? <laughs> I don't care. No, you, oh, I didn't care about it too much. Do, would, would you like to know? Yeah. Money. He money gave her money road. and she left him. And but he that's the her. thing in Hollywood when they got money. Say again? Money talks. Money yeah. talks. Especially no, no, I, I'm saying uh, that, that there's also a very thin line. You know, when you, when you use a man for his money and then you up and leave him. Especially when he's resourceful. You are saying you're using your money. You use women for their pussies. So what's the what's the big difference? <laughs> Be careful when you come to so, that topic. So, yeah, no, no. Okay, hold, hold on. on. Hold okay, on. I'll ask first. I'll come to it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, the notion of using a woman for her pussy. If I come to you as a woman and we have sex and we both have orgasms, haven't we both benefited in a way? Thank you. <laughs> now, okay, now let me tell you that. Maybe let you should also pay me for your orgasm. <laughs> well, if it's we an old, should pay each other, if yeah. If it's an old guy, I'm not going to benefit from it. If it's an old guy. But listen to this. Yeah, but what no, if it's an old guy and he makes So you, you guys who think you benefit every time, do you make a woman come every time? No. <laughs> Most men want to come before women came. So is that both enjoyment? No. no but I'm saying if we both have orgasms, why should one pay the other then? Because if we both, both benefit, benefit, yeah. Because sometimes women don't want to. Don't want you don't to want watch. to what? You don't want to have sex. And we force then, then want to say yes if you don't yeah. want to have Forcing sex. It. But most of the time, it's men who initiate. But yeah, listen yeah to this. but then listen again, when it's sex. consensual I don't and you both of, have an orgasm, yeah. why should one have to pay? Listen, it's not about paying. It's about not sure you guys are paying for it. Listen, you are married. You're very young <laughs> to your beautiful wife there, right? Now listen to this. You... She okay, out. now listen. <laughs> you yeah. have some of the bills, right? You yeah. gotta make sure your wife is well fed, right? I have to. No, so, but, yeah. you, but you're saying wife. Listen, this wife. You're saying look, wife. So, um, you know why you are paying by for law pussy, and by religion, I have to be the provider of my household. Yeah. So, yeah. either way, if you say by law, by is you have to. Either way, you're paying for it. Okay, let me ask. Either you, way, let me ask you. Let me ask you something. <laughs> There's no other. Okay, either me, way. Yeah, let me ask you something, Beatrice. <laughs> Again, so when you when you get to a point where you say I want a man with money or I want a high value man, here's how I look at it. You're not the only other woman that is looking for money, right? So there's going to be ten other women that are looking for exactly the same thing. Now suddenly the guy that with money at has, this time. Hold on, let me finish uh-huh. my point. Suddenly the guy with money is getting ten women that want him for the exact same reason. You're with me. So meaning his standards of what he looks for in a woman also goes up. You're with me? So suddenly pussy is just not enough. Because you can get pussy anyway. Pussy's, pussy, sex is easy to find. Right? Mm-hmm. And love is it's, it's very easy to find. Love is something different. That's number one. Number two is there's ten women like you who offer me pussy. And now I have to choose one of you. Hold on. They all want money. What do you bring to the table apart from your pussy? 
Darling, I am the table. First of all, I'm well educated. Second, I'll drive that guy crazy. Yeah. How? Okay? How? So, here's, How? The, here's, the fa- here's the fact. I am one proud person. Okay? Uh-huh. A guy asked me, what are you bring to the table? I tell him, like, hey, listen. I didn't get where I am now by just being laid back. Mm-hmm. I've hustled my way up. Mm-hmm. Of course, which I'm not even, like, hide and not do anything. One, I also make my own money. Right now, what I do in cybersecurity, I make to 80,000 to 90,000 US dollars a year. I want a guy that makes more than I do. Mm. So after I graduate college, I'm like, I want a man that makes more than 100,000 US dollars. Th- that I hear you. We are talking of a notion where you're a sugar baby. You are making your own money. This is why I say, so far, I like you, right? You are talking of a person who does not have the education, whose sole source of income is her pussy. What am I getting from you apart from your And pussy? that's why I tell girls, don't just sit there and look pretty. Do something. See, now we are talking. That's see, exactly where I want to drive that's you I to. Include. So even me, when I was a sugar baby, I was just being just like I'm a sugar baby. Yeah. I was selling on Amazon. I was doing other things. So I was also going to school. And also one thing I found about a lot of sugar daddy, I did it. Whenever they hear that you are going to school, they like it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, she's not just any girl that's sitting home. Right. At least if I give her money, she'll spend in school. And that's they, where... They give a bit more respect yeah, when you're going to school. Right. They, they want yeah. to like, put you on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. So that's where I figured out... First, I had to figure out what guys are looking for. Mm-hmm. And first of all, I was from Zambia. I got an accent, okay? Is he going to find any Zambian <laughs> woman walking in the streets? No. Yeah. So if he comes to me and tell me, I'm not going to give you money, I'm like, yeah, go find another Zambian girl if you're going to find her. So I had a lot of pride in me. I'm like, yeah, I'm money in the bottle, darling. <laughs> Come and right. in the bottle. Mm-hmm. So... There is that notion where I knew exactly what you're saying. That's true. A man, if you, even you no know, matter how much you're beautiful, no matter how much you're good in bed, if you don't have nothing to bring to the table, is the event you're going to leave you, no matter how much money is got. True. I mean, Beyonce so, got cheated on, right? Yeah. So that's why I always tell women to have something going on. When I was going to school, I that used I my education and I used my business. What do you do? Well, I do business. Yeah. Well, what type of business is this? And if he wants, he can even invest in my business. I had a lot of men who were like, you're doing business? Oh, do you need to expand your business? Yeah, I'm going to school. Do you need school money? Yes. So I used that stability where I'm like, I also have something going on. Mm-hmm. That's why I said, darling, I am the table. Um, Beatrice, you carry the tag of influencer. Basically, you, you influence people. You know what I mean? And... Elson, help me phrase this. You, you're, you're an influencer. You influence people, mostly young girls who are... Well, every, there's this men, women, there's boys and girls following you, and you're an influencer, influencing these people. But I'd like to focus on the young girls especially. Mm-hmm. You know, teens, preteens, because, I mean, everybody's on Facebook nowadays, and they're going to see you're close to 400,000 mm-hmm. on Facebook in terms of following. I'm trying to understand a woman in your position and you talk about you know a, a lot in your post you're trying to encourage women to do the right things in life you know uh, how do you look at what you put out you know and how does that work with what direction you want girls coming behind you to take especially when it comes to you know talking about things like sugar daddies well, first of all, I'm not responsible for raising somebody's kid. Yeah. Your kids come on Facebook to watch my videos. You are as a parent, yeah. that's your job. Yeah. There is my Facebook. When yeah. I started blogging Facebook, yeah. I'm originally employed by Facebook. They asked me, what type of content are you going to produce? I told them, relationship adult fashion. Mm-hmm. My Facebook is rated 18 plus. Yeah. So that means, so if a kid comes on my, fa- my Facebook... Without parent consent, that's not my problem. But again, one thing that I've realized in life, we always try to say, okay, this one, she's a sugar baby. This one, she's a prostitute. This one, she's a what? But when you are just walking in Great East Road, you see a lot of women right there standing, right? Yeah. They will still do it. So why not make videos about telling out these women how to use protection? Because at the end of the day, they will still do it. You yeah. tell young girls, don't go have sugar daddies. you still find them do it. Mm-hmm. So at that point, you even if you said do not do it, they will still do it. It's like you tell women, don't get married, don't date the married man, they will still do it. <laughs> so the thing is, you got to tell them, okay, if you can't control them, tell them. Tell them, this is what you're going to face when you do this and this and that. That's why I give 
advise and I also give them like disadvantage. I use my uh, direction. I told them sometimes I say, yeah, one dif- one bad part about dating an older guy, you're gonna see a lot of grey balls. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> see, so I give them those advantages so that they know in case they get. <laughs> See a lot of great balls, Stanley. Where did you find this one from? Man? <laughs> it's just, it's just the reality. It's where like, did you get this one yeah, from, Stanley? You're gonna be juggling old shriveled. Have you ever had a person damn near catch a heart attack while they're on top of you? Me? Yeah. No, but I almost felt like one was about to die. I'm like, Jesus, you're gonna die. <laughs> what happened? I'm like, if you're gonna die, at least sign the papers just so you can leave everything ah. to me. <laughs> ah, this one is wrong, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, um, because you're so outspoken and you don't sugarcoat anything, you just speak your mind. You know what I mean? You, you've, you've got a lot of hate on social media, especially, I think, from uh, people back home here. Because you know how Zambians are very conservative and most of the time pretentious um, I'm, I'm looking at You know Some posts here You know Speaking of hate You recently went off On uh, two Facebook bloggers Hagra Tembo And Kondwani Banda Who called you a prostitute And a bad example To young girls uh, Why did you allow Their comments to You know Bring out that Explosive reaction Well With uh, Hagra But the, the Tembo That yeah. guy I don't want to say The name again I always call him <laughs> Kachikala With that guy It's a uh, he went against my education. If he talk, if he let's, say, if he didn't include my education yeah. and my career, if he just said Beatrice is a prostitute, I wouldn't even respond to him. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about people's opinion. Yeah. But when it comes to my career, my uh, job or whatever, I put a lot of effort. So when I was blogging over the years, I didn't even include my education. And most people are just surprised. Boom. I'm at the graduation, I'm graduating. They didn't even know that I was going. That part, it was some of the things that I sacrificed. Night, I used to work at, at a factory at night. Break time, I would go sit outside and study so that when I go to class, yeah. tomorrow they ask me, what is networking, what is IP address? I'll know it. So I know what I went through. So yeah. when someone comes and attacks something that I value, and I have a profile on LinkedIn about my professional life. So now when you start talking about it, I can, can be connected. And that's where I got pissed off. Wow. Let's talk about your personal brand now. And uh, there, there's something my wife mentioned uh, this morning, which I found quite interesting. You are you, you're undoubtedly a beautiful woman. I'll, I'll give you that in front of my wife. who will see that right behind you. And you're a beautiful woman with influence, your brand. But you also portray a very blunt personality. You know what I mean? You don't sugarcoat anything and you say things as they are. Whatever comes to your mind, you speak it out. You don't <laughs> hold back. You're like a female version of Elson. And you know your your followers. <laughs> I'm Elson. You, you, you know your your followers respect that no nonsense. You know strong character. I'll give you that. But people have accused you of showering. You know you know people in your comments with insults. Why are you so confrontational on social media? It depends on which day you find me. If the moon is on the left, on the right, yeah. I answer. If it's if I'm just busy, I won't even pay attention. So it, sometimes I will be responding and sometimes I won't. But at this point, negative don't don't affect me. Because sometimes I actually post things wanting to get that reflection. I'll post things and expect people like what I want, want to get. Like the new video that I'm posting up, I know it's going to bring a lot of talking. So if it brings negative, positive, I'm already expecting it. Mm. So at this point, uh, ever my experience with blogging and making videos, yeah. it, nothing surprised me anymore. It's just like, well, it's part of it. And then the thing is, one thing people don't know, the more they comment hate and talk about that, yeah. the more Facebook like, oh, these people must be liking what this girl is posting. Facebook will keep pushing me more, pushing me more. And they're paying you more. Yeah. So it's actually, the more they hate, the more they talk, the more I make the more, more money. How much are you making from Facebook, though? Uh, per video sometimes, like if a video reaches 1.3, like I, some of my videos, if you see, they've gone down. From yeah. 2021, because Facebook is merging my page to the new one. Mm. Like if I, if the video reaches 3.8 million, like the one that I had just like in June, not July, February, that is about 2,000 US dollars. Then if it's 100,000 views, that should be about 100 dollars. So and that is not every time. Every day the video accumulates for years, and that goes every time. So sometimes I might end up getting maybe. 
the highest I've gotten so far, I'm not the highest one, is 10,000 a month, then 5,000, 2,000. It changes. It changes. So sometimes I might get $100 if I didn't make a lot of videos. Like, But since, you, you've actually made $10,000 in, in a certain month. That's February. Yeah. $10,000. Because uh, the video that right? went that went viral got three point something million plus other videos. Not that so you all. can, and then all those videos you put together, it yeah. can add up some money. At the end of plus you have uh, what is it called? Subscri uh stars. Yeah. Stars and you've got subscription. Subscription is most people in the US they'll subscribe to my page and then they pay me two something a month uh dollars, then that all stands into money. What page is that? Facebook? Yeah. Facebook has got paid subscriptions. Yeah, yeah they do. Oh, okay. Even ours, if we registered ourselves as being in America, we'd get yeah. And okay. you know, if our numbers are good, we'll get paid, yeah. Definitely. Actually you get now. Yeah. You just find, find, you just have to, f this, eh, I no, won't say that to, to, to us, <laughs> we have not, we've just not cashed in our money yet, but YouTube, yeah, we're, we're making money off YouTube, we're yeah. start also YouTube. on Facebook, actually you make more money on Facebook, yeah, I mean, after that, this you're going to show us, that's that. why me, YouTube, ever since I discovered, because Facebook, yeah, they're trying to compete with YouTube, mm. so they are, Pictures, have you ever thought of OnlyFans, I mean, I would pay, only fans, nah, I almost signed up. Maybe I still have my account, but I never did it. <laughs> what would you show? Fashion, nothing. Hey! Only fans, only show fashion and only fans. No, you want you want people from my work to find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would get that would get you fired, yeah. Yeah. So things like that might. Yeah, the topic that I talk about, they might even laugh about it. But <laughs> things like that, only fans, yeah. I, yeah, but if they pay me one million only fans, I'll get on it. Damn, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Quit your job that day. Oh fuck! If the only fans were like were paying one, I said that if I, if I were to make shit thousand, I would join. Um, Is there anything you would not do for money? Me? There's some things I would not do. What wouldn't you? I ain't doing ano sex for money. Fuck no. What about those <laughs> girls who go to Dubai? I'm sure you've seen those videos that are getting shit on. And I ain't they get doing paid. that. It could be a sugar daddy. And yeah, if my sugar you. daddy, that's why there's a pussy. I ain't, I ain't doing that shit. It's, again, see. Uh, believe me. <laughs> also, if it's like let a me tell you, plan. those are not sugar daddies. A sh the, okay, that is, that's the thing is, you guys put the things different. There's a sugar daddy and there is a prostitution. Your sugar daddy won't basically ask you for such shit. You are in a relationship. Okay? So uh, then but then, but I hear you. But then there's people with a fetish, regardless of you being in a relationship. Bondage is a fetish. Uh, <laughs> bondage, I would like it to beat them, not me, not them beating me. Yeah, them. but again, you you do admit that people in relationships do do that, right? Yeah, bondage. I've beaten some white ass. Yeah. Before. So my point is, there's there's levels to this. So there are people who have that fetish, regardless of you being in a relationship, especially if they know that the power dynamic that they have over you is money. That's the thing. You have to have limits. That one, I would never do it. But the thing is, if you have a guy that is controlling you have to do, you don't have no power. You can, here's one thing. If you know what you're doing, you're smart enough. You can control the most rich person on earth mm -hmm. and to do his bidding. If a guy telling you what to do and because he's got money, darling, you don't have his table. Mm -hmm. There's, you just have to use women's, I don't know, it's called kind of, you have to, there is a way. One thing, there's somebody who can be super rich and they will be doing it because they will give women money and that. Then there's certain men who you find is rich and you have to program it the way you want it. Where instead of him trying to put out because of man, that's why I'm going out. You tell him because you are with me and I'm beautiful and I can offer you this and this. That's why you are with me. I'm not dating you because you have money. You turn the table around. I'm not letting any guy control me. That's the thing about me. No matter how much he has money, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And those are things, when it comes to Dubai shit, that one I ain't doing it. Ah, I can make my cyber security money and make enough money. That one is out of table. Wow. Interesting. You know, I've noticed one thing about this interview, though, from the time we started. And there's something that your, you know, followers bring out a whole lot when it comes to every video that you bring up. Um... A lot of your followers admire your confidence, especially when it comes to you know mother tongue influence. Your RLs, yes, it hasn't been that bad today. Like, yeah, it has. Uh, even people should, behind uh, you are agreeing. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like a, a lot of people talk about. Hey, when we just mentioned the name Beatrice Mons, people are like, hey, that chicken are RLs. <laughs> I, I told you how. It's there was the a time alcohol. that I went. It's to a podcast. 
Brad is the alcohol. It brings alcohol. out the best plus the alcohol. <laughs> there was a time that I went to a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. I will not mention the name of the restaurant. So I say to this waiter, I think I told you this. So I say to this yeah. waiter, I like I like a burger. This is fine. So then I ask him, what side does it come with? Then it says it comes with flies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like, nigga, I the what? <laughs> <laughs> if you bring no goddamn flies in my food, nigga, we are fighting. That could be bring me. Bring flies in my freaking food. <laughs> and that could be me. <laughs> that could be me. You tell me how to pronounce bed near. <laughs> Leave that. Did you have a hard time in America, though? No, actually, in America, nobody. It's on me, actually. That's a surprise. Only part. Zambians will laugh at you. Zambian. In America, I've never faced that shit. Because, yeah, again, in, in America, the English is horrible, too. Then. That's oh, it. they got like, what? Yo, man, I don't like yeah, stand the English. Of is English. So, they, them, them is better. But do, do you ever catch yourself, you know, putting an R where an L should be and you correct yourself? or No. You can't tell when you make it, a mistake? No. It comes out yeah. naturally. It just comes out naturally where I have no control over it. Yeah. It just comes out. I've always wondered if Bowman's true surname is actually Rusambo. <laughs> okay. Be- okay. You we, know we, what? We need, to, we need to have part two with Bowman. That's, a, that's all I'll say for now. But does it ever bother you? Rusambo, you does it ever bother you when people come to your comments and you know they, they tease you about your R's and L's? It used to at first. Now I don't. How, how do you overcome that though? I accepted who I am. Mm. If you're gonna have confidence, I accept you gotta accept who I am. I yeah. know I'm not perfect. You see, I got my bad, my good side. So I gotta accept both of them. It's part of my personality. So if I, if those things keep affecting me, I'm gonna end up become sad. I'm one of those person who believes in you are what you bring to you. If I start being sad because of what people say, I'm gonna start being depressed. I wanna be happy. Fuck what people say. I'm gonna be happy. So Sp- speaking of your happiness. And I, I know a lot of times we watch, you know, uh, documentaries on uh, TLC or whatever. Even E, like every celebrity in America that has, not, no, let me correct that, not every. A lot of females get boob jobs. She's got a boob job story. You, do you have a boob job? Mm-hmm. Oh, you got a boob job? Mm-hmm. I could tell. <laughs> no, you no, couldn't. No, you can't. <laughs> you want to feel it? Yeah. You want to feel it? <laughs> <laughs> Please no, don't but- die, Elson. <laughs> You're good. Yeah, but I could tell. It's the, it's what, the, first, what, thing, what, it's the first thing apart from your contacts that I noticed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, best, but I mean, bo- boobs like this. Basically, I'm fake. A lot, of, a lot of women have them naturally, but I, I don't think you could tell just by looking outside. You can't tell. No, I can. I, I've had. You've, a few, you've had experience. You can't yeah. tell even if you touch them. You can't tell. No, you you, look yes, the, you look can't the tell. The reason is why it's gummy bear boob. It's the new software that that they created <laughs> that makes it software. feel like real and touch yeah. like real. So mm-hmm. you can't tell it. So what's your story? What what drew you to you know this getting a boob job, an implant? Well, I thought my sugar daddy wanted a boob job and he's willing to yeah, pay but, for but it. But why? I had smaller boobs, and I was like, why am I boob falling and I don't even have a kid? I need to get some bigger boobs. <laughs> was, was it affecting your market? No, not really. They've been sucked on a little too hard. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are mean! <laughs> 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 what do you call that? What do you call that lizard that like sucks on the teeth of like a cow until blood comes out? T- no, not a tick, like a big ass lizard. That's such a thing. How do you know about that, bro? I grew um, up in the sticks. Like these things, you you wait. had to you had to. If you keep cattle, especially in the villages, lizard. Yeah. Ticks. No, it's a lizard. It's a big ass thing with a big tail. It's a monitor lizard. You know, with like white and black it, colors. You know, t- tell us no lies, uh, Elson. I'm not seeing anything like that, man. No, there's, there's this huge lizard. It goes with a cow and, tail and begins to suck until blood I comes. I never up. heard you of it. I never heard of it. You know, I'm I'm let Google. me Google it. Let me Google. No, no, go ahead. I'll Google it. I'll find it. Lizard. That sucks. That sucks. Cow's tits. Should I say cow's tits or? That's what I didn't see. That's why it's not coming. It's called a monitor lizard. Yeah, you said that. It's a monitor lizard. This one. I've never heard of it doing that, man. No. Can I get a cow? A cow will actually allow the lizard to. It doesn't allow because it's got a long tail, so at times it ties like the like the back legs with the tail and begins to suck. But how come there's no video of it on YouTube? And YouTube has I've never heard right? of it. No, I've never I'm, heard I'm of it. I'm wondering to get yeah. one. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I think Elson is lying. No, 
So how did he know that it's called a monitor lizard? Well, you asked, he was guessing what lizard it is. Fam. He was just guessing what lizard it is. It's, it's, I read on it. They talk, Google they, they, has no such... Li- okay, what, what? Switcher, what should I Google? No, I just told you, monitor goddamn lizard. What Why should, don't you people believe no. me? I was trying to Google monitor that uh, lizard that sucks cow's tits, and it's so complicated. <laughs> Google monitor. <laughs> Google monitor lizard. Uh, hold on. No, nah, man, I don't believe this story. Okay. This is bullshit. Hold on. No, we need to come to the get monitor to the bottom lizard of it. Aha. Cow titty. Wait, hold on. See, I said monitor lizard sucks cattle, and see what the first ti- um on little what? dragons. Yeah, Let, let's see. No. You see that? On what page is that? No, read the name of the of the website. Farmers Weekly, yeah. No, and, wait, wait, wait. And, and what do farmers <clears throat> keep? Wait. Oh, and this is South Africa, so this is believable. If it doesn't... God damn it, why the fuck do you not believe me? Do I not... <laughs> Jesus, I told this guy about boar goes again and he looks at me oh, like I'm crap, crazy. Oh, crap, they have to suck out all their milk. Oh, look at you, Olsen. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So you are going to believe Google over what the fuck they <laughs> say yes. to you? You're not a farmer. And you're not a lizard expert, so I had to check it out, yeah. Well, I'm an expert in sucking stuff. And you're not Google. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, Zanda. I see what you did there. Yeah, Zanda. <laughs> um, wow. You learn something new every day. So, so, you've had, so you've had a couple of monitor lizards suck the shit out of your boobs. <laughs> if you call them that. <laughs> So I had to make them bigger, but I just loved bigger boobs. I don't know. I used just one of my. Did you things. see irises? Uh, no. You didn't. You didn't see the photo. Oh, the photo I did. You did. Yeah. Iris. Yeah. Yeah, she's got nice boobs. She does, right? Yeah. Look at him. He's like she does, right? <laughs> it's funny for them. <laughs> and I never. Beatrice, um, do you believe that a woman should be free to get any, you know, form of cosmetic surgery to feel good about herself? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's it's like I think it's if it's your body, do what you want to it. Nobody should have lied. So that, that's your body. advice to young yeah. female fans. If on this it's topic. your body, do what you need to it. And me, I'm not against what people do. What people do is out of you see. I can never be against something that I have no control with. Yeah. Why would I be against somebody doing something that I can never go and go and say you cannot get a nose job, you cannot get a boob? I'm not gonna change them. It's their body I got no control over. So those things don't bother me. For me, what bothers me is me. I'm going to do what Beatrice wants, what Beatrice feels like. So in, any other enhancements that you've had? Uh, yes, maybe. Any other enhancement? Probably they boots. took my fats from my thighs and put it a little bit on my fat, on my butt. <laughs> oh, they've, they've done that? Yeah, they've done that well, a little so, bit. But so it was medium. Ass, you've it, your ass it, 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 well, it was medium, though. It was medium. I wanted to be medium. Wait, let's see, let's see your ass. Yeah, I ain't showing it. <laughs> wow, you, you've had a lot of work done on you, eh? Yeah. So, so the boobs, the ass, what else? That's it. That's next it. time, I'm, I think next I'm going for my eye surgery. I want them to be complete. Yeah, I, I was about to ask. We've never seen you on social media with just your, you know, you, 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 you're always uh, wearing contacts. We've never seen you without the contacts. What's that about? That's so I can see. Um, it's far away I can see here and here But if I don't have contact I can't see Oh okay And, and you, you're not, you're not going to wear The uh, the transparent contacts No you always have... I, Whenever I started I asked the doctor like, What's this Like okay You want to wear One color like, all the time yeah, yeah so I'm asking One thing is I'm going to get my surgery So they can change my eyes Permanently to this car mm, Okay Permanently Yep So about about that ass again Can I Uh 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 Unless you become my, my wife Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about it. Ah, let's run in here. <laughs> hey, wait. Yeah. Okay. We have an important conversation here. Do you mind? <laughs> so, Beatrice, <laughs> can you please rate this episode eighteen plus plus? <laughs> if I make it twenty three plus. Hey. Anyway, you were saying, yeah. So, Beatrice, uh? the Playboy thing. Uh. Yeah. So let's see. No, not today. What part, you, what part of your body do you like the most? Both, of course. My doctor was like, Frank Stan, man. He, he was like, you want them to look natural but fake? I'm like, yeah, if you're natural, I'm like, yeah. What part of a guy's body do you like the most? Guy's body? Body, yeah. I got nothing that I like about it, but guy's body. You don't like anything about a guy's Balls. body? <laughs> How do you like them? Like old and gray and wrinkled? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd say the wallet, but the wallet is not a part of the body now, is it? 
<laughs> well, it all depends. People got different features. Some people they got like weird features. Some people will be okay. There's every guy's got different features. Some guy will be handsome with no item, and some guy will be uh, angry with a big item. Some guy the will size, have no balls. Really? That's my video I made. The size matter. <laughs> Does it? In your opinion? No, it all depends. On? It all depends on a guy. I don't know. The funny one. I know you're on, you're on your own, yeah. <laughs> Asking for help. No, you're on your own. No, it depends on the guy. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, How? Size. Because there's some guys out there who are like big, but they don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and some guys who are small, but they know how to work with it. So, so, it so, so what do you prefer if you had a choice? Depends. If I had a choice? Mm-hmm. Because some guys also are testless, so I don't know until I test it. Are testless? Yeah. So, but is there a way for you to know? <laughs> if a, if, is there a way for you to know if a guy is good in bed without having sex with him? No, you can't know until you fuck it. So you Basically. have to have sex with him to know. There's no way, like. Or okay, do you know if a girl is good in bed or not? You don't know until you. I, I can. How? I, I've developed that over the years. Uh, wait until you 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 because get the one that's heard, like a snake. You. <laughs> <laughs> that tastes like a snake. You, nothing. Okay. Is it dance like a snake or tastes like a snake? Dance like a snake. Dance like a, okay, okay. Dance like a snake. That's a weird analogy. <laughs> so, are, are you dating right now? I'm actually engaged. Are you? Yeah. Actually, word in the street: the person you're engaged with is old enough to be your father. How no, true is the story? No, that's a lie. My man is yeah. not is that old. Gandhi, can you bring my photo? But you can't show it though. My man is. Alright, yeah, cool. Just, just for us. Just for us in the Yeah. My so man, so, who, so, so my she? man is not. That that's my sister. Oh, okay. My man is not that old. Uh, yeah, of course. I like him because, huh? Yeah, of course, he's older than me. <laughs> but oh, he's not how old that old. Huh? I'm old. thirty. I'm gonna be thirty-one this year. Yeah, thirty, turning thirty-one. Yeah. Okay. And my man is fifty something. <laughs> hey, where is he? My man is fifty something and is. Where is okay. he? He's in US. Oh, okay. But since you're you're used to cheating, you can cheat on, on him with me. I <laughs> mean, better, this comes naturally, right? I'm a problem. You can't handle me. You think so? <laughs> He's gonna come home dead. I've got something. <laughs> I'm sending him on a casket. I've got something to tame you with. <laughs> I'm sending him on a casket. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, it, oh, man, it's cold like a witch's titty. <laughs> you you want one? I've dated one. <laughs> this one is exposed too much. <laughs> I've Even dated witches. One. My ex was a witch. Mama, mama, mama. <laughs> I think there's a long line of them, though. Um, are we still looking for the photo, though? Yeah. You have to search so that far down to, to find... It's not like oh, too bad. Yeah. He's a cool guy. Yeah, it's not that, like, hard. But I, I like the suspense. It keeps people wondering. People do, <laughs> so you, you, haven't, you haven't posted him anyway before. No, and I wanted, ah. to, I want, I, I wanted to, like, okay, let me keep the suspense if I'm to If I'm to describe this guy, he looks like one of those looks, guys that you find in Texas. Kind of. He, was, he wants, like, He's a, from Texas? He wants, like, a camper, like, a, what is I draw something. Like, he, he drives a truck, like, one of those can, can big just trucks. Put the, the mic straight, sorry, bitches. Yeah? Yeah. You said, sorry, what? Bitches. bitches. Just oh. Okay. I thought you said bitches. He's kind of like all American guy. That's why people are like, you guys look, because he's all, all American guy and I'm all yeah. this and this. But that's what all makes cool. us better, yeah. I know the, all our viewers want to see that photo now. So we're trying to describe him. It's like a bit, it's a, it's a chubby Bruce Willis, eh? I call him Ken Rogers when he's dressed <laughs> up. That's what I call him. When he's dressed up. Yeah. I, I, even when he's, not, when he's dressed, naked. When he's not when he's, not, when he's dressed up, he's always my Ken Rogers. So what do you mean him. when you say when he's dressed up? When, whenever he's, when he's, because he loves to dress up in the country. You know, oh, the country right. style kind of Ken Rogers. See why I say taxes? So he was right when he says taxes. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I he's get. kind of those guys that, okay, they'll get out, get dirty, make money and come yeah. home and, yeah. You, you you made a post recently. I, I, I'm following all of your posts right now as we're going on with this. And you recently made a post that said, uh, and I quote, I am better off with an older white man than a broke Zambian man. That one, me? Yeah. Was, uh, no, that one, they misquoted me. Oh, that was a misquote? Yeah, so what they okay. do is they, these are uh, some brokers, they will take a sentence and then misquote them. And actually, that one was not even me. It was some girl, which was it Nora? I think it was Nora who made the video, and mm. because Nora, she's basically in US, so what they did is they took my picture. Oh, and put her voice behind it. Yeah, and then put my pictures there, and then it was like, 
what the hell? So that one, nah, that one, that one is always Nora. If you look up Nora, she shares, there is, she shares her husband lifestyle and all that. So mm. people were bullying her by that time when she posted. That's when she wrote that. So that one I've always been referred to as me when it wasn't me. And then you've created an app where you connect, you know, people with overseas partners. How's that going though? It's going so far growth, but I'm still looking for people to invest in my business. Well, what prompted that? <laughs> well, the dating app. People lo- are asking basically me, long distance relationships. What you're people are asking me, B, I want to get, I want to meet someone overseas, and it was difficult. It's a lot of work yeah. connecting right and there. So I thought, well, let me develop an app, call it, and develop and send it to Google and give it so to. There's only one like that though. So that's when I Tinder? came. That's when mm-hmm. I created yeah. it. Tinder. It's meet international. Like, some it's called it's there like is sugar one. Babies. No, that one is for local. The one that is international something. Mine mm. is called Meet International Singles. There's, there's, there's an app. It's called Sugar Babies or something. Sugar uh, Babies are a lot. Wait, hold on. No, 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 talk amongst yourselves. No, no, wait, wait to find this because... Uh, yeah? Oh, actually, so I just went on Google and said Sugar Babies app and there's like eight of them that have popped Look up. Look at wow. Meet International Singles on Google Play. Oh, Miss Dead, that's my app. So seeking dot com yeah. sugar daddy meet so seeking one rich, beautiful no rich meet beautiful what's your price established men see in US that's and the best one that I like number six is Ashley Madison I told oh, you Ashley Madison right no. you know Ashley no, Madison let me right? tell you the Ashley Madison no, app but it's for married there. people it's for yeah. married people no but it, you know how that app is like the horrible app in US no I know because it was hacked. <laughs> Yeah, but that app was for married people who are looking for side chicks. Yeah, I know. I know. So I said it's for married people. And that and you know app was is? so fun. You know what the tagline is? What? Life is short having a fear. Hmm. I don't want married people. I hate married people. That's why I'd rather date a 90-year-old who's about to die than a married guy. But the Italian guy was married, wasn't he? Yeah. I don't know. That motherfucker was shit. Like, he was hiding shit. <laughs> He, he didn't tell me that yeah, he was. You guys were hiding a lot from each other, considering what, what you said. He didn't tell me who yeah. he was until I saw it on TV. But they didn't be seen. That time I took some. Because all you were focused and on then was my, the money. My, my aunt was testing me like, "Hey, the guy that came home to see you when you were with him is he?" But I was like, "What?" Then I called him like, "I saw you on TV. Saw you." And I was like, "Yeah, sorry, babe, I didn't tell him my like, fuck." Because all you were focused on was the money. Come so, on. It's, so, it's, so it's easy I'm to miss the important things. Hey, if I didn't do what I had to do, I couldn't be here right now. See why you missed that he was married? I don't know if he was married or not. I never even asked because I got pissed off. <laughs> yeah, because it was the money that you were looking at. Yeah, so it's easy to miss everything else, boo boo. Yeah. Uh uh-uh, uh, he didn't tell me. <laughs> you, you've said your app is uh, doing quite well. Right now, I got 10,000 people. That's not. Where, where are they mostly from and who's subscribing mostly to Actually, your app? Actually, Zambia is the Zambia. top. Zambia is the top. Wow. <laughs> Zambia is one of the people from, from. Zambia is the top country, followed by Nigeria. So, from <laughs> Zambia So, what do you have? What do you have the most of? People do you have? Leave. Yeah. Do you have more sugar babies looking for sugar daddies, or is it the other way around? Do you? It have all more? depends. There is a uh, guys who are looking for. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, who do you have the most of? So, oh, of the ten thousand, I... who is more? Is it more sugar? I think daddies? that this time I've accumulated more girls than women. More girls more. than women. <laughs> <laughs> more girls than men right so point. so the supply yeah so the supply is for man is man so I was like always tell them like you might be chatting to four five six uh, one girl chatting to other whatever so I was so there yeah. might be like five girls all vying for the same one rich guy yeah See, like last I- time I had one guy who was like um very rich from Canada and his friends with like I don't know this famous actor in US you know was looking for someone Not and he was now. looking for this and that and all that. So it all went good. And he had, he had girls you're starting with and he had to choose one who he liked. So. Hey, speaking of Canada, I don't know if you heard this. He, um, You know the Jeffrey Epstein story? Yeah. Ghislaine Maxwell? Yeah. yeah she was given 55 years. Yeah. Tw- yeah. Yeah. 55 years. I saw that. 55. You know she's Canadian, right? Uh, I, I, thought, she I thought she was from United Kingdom. Oh, yeah, the I UK. So, yeah. yeah, the UK. Yeah. Okay, what they did was fucked up. I felt bad Jeez. for the for the young girls, but I didn't feel bad for the grown-up. Okay, if you are a grown-up, you go do those things. You, there, there was, you, there was you no understand. Grown up, there was some grown-up. No, now they are. Now they are grown. But those girls, I but felt sorry for them. But back then, the reason them. why 
he was in so much trouble is because they were all underage. Now they are grown, but back no, then when the crisis the was one, committed. like the one that was the masseuse. Okay, there's one girl that I honestly, with the underage, I understand. This mm-hmm. is why people misquote me when I say the underage, I understand. Mm-hmm. But okay, just listen to this. Mm-hmm. This is where most people get it wrong. Mm-hmm. If a rich guy tells you, I'm gonna fly you to a private island, come. Pack your pack your things bag and go. Do you think it's gonna take you there and look at you? Of course not. <laughs> so this girl was way over twenty something. We don't want to see you in the same situation as this lady who's getting fifty five years. So what are you doing to control, especially you know when it comes to because. You, you were in grade nine when you started having these experiences, but are you doing anything to protect young girls with your dating app? What I'm doing? Yeah. We well, got security in check where people sometimes if they are using fake things, they can report. Yeah. And sometimes I can put people, block them based on IP address. Because one thing I've noticed, some people will go and once you block them, girls report them that they are fake. They'll come back using a different email, but I go for the IP address. But IP address can be changed. Yeah, but even if it can be changed, there's other way you can do it. Which is? Which is criping until they are, what is it? The location. So even VPN. those, look, yeah, even those IP address, the VPN that you are using. So people don't understand. They always say, "Oh, VPN, people can't trace you. They can trace you." Yeah, but you can block your IP address. Yeah, but people still in people in cybersecurity, they can trace you. Yeah, but again, if you change your VPN, you change your location. Those people in the VPN, they are brigaded by the U.S. government. If somebody is doing something that is against the law. You can contact the VPN that is contact coming from, and those people, it's a, it's by the law. They're supposed to give you that person's. Do you know what VPN. the dark web is? Huh? Do you know dark what the dark web, web is? Onion ring, I know all about that. Do you know that people sell Sequent. cocaine? I know about the sick. We learned why, why, all why that. Why are they? Why are they not found? They're not. They're found. Some of them are found. Some and mo- of them, and, and most aren't. And this know- is this is how you get people from Russia hacking into the DNC in America, and they're but, never okay, found. But okay, do you know why yeah. in rig an election? Rigging election. Why we have to found? learn about the Silk Road and the dark web because Allegedly, we have to Reagan know election. how to do it. Mm-hmm. But again, you can never be hundred percent safe there in Africa. Yeah. There is no such thing as I'm safe. I'm not. There is no such things because sometimes that's why the U.S. government sometimes I should not say that. Eh, that's going part of not my disclosure. <laughs> that's why sometimes when you are taking that uh, while I went to school, there is a seal for FBI and other things. So now, when you are taking those classes, because they were commissioned by the government, you are supposed to know that they even take like hackers and tell them, hey, you are a bad guy, come work for us. Teach us how you did some bad things so we can learn. Mm. So the bad people, they're always creating something new. That's why the secret, even up to now, the onion ring, those things to work. Because those guys, are, especially the Russians, I have respect for them. Russian guys, man, I'm a baby compared to what I do. Of course, man. <laughs> Can we talk about you know fashion? Um, okay. I'm 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 busy here, and I'm, I'm sure you've been seeing me look at my you know laptop a whole lot. I'm I'm following a lot of uh, activity on your page, and a lot of people follow your style, you know, for style inspiration and the you know the witty way in which you make dressing up fun. I was uh, just watching one in which uh, you're showing girls. Uh, how to dress up for the day and what it says about, you know, what, what it says to people, what they're wearing and what it says to people. Your handbag and shoe, you know, collection, your, the combinations and all that. When do you fall in love with fashion and who's your, you know, personal style inspiration? Um, Adrian Amber, she's like my inspiration. She's, she's pretty much a vintage. Uh, I don't know if you watched that movie, Breakfast at Tuffney. I watched that movie Change My Life Oh Breakfast oh, at Tiffany Oh yeah, my god yeah, yeah. That's a wild I bad. love the Okay that, So I am into vintage So I love the way She was presenting herself The outfits Yeah So that's what uh, it's, Before that Even in Zambia I would go to Salaola You yeah. know Get some outfit And look pretty And then go out Like pretending Like I got money When I got no, nothing <laughs> So it all started A long time ago I, yeah. I knew that to be successful in life, you gotta dress the part. Even if you are broke as fuck. So that's what I used to do in my early age. Dress look nice, and that's how actually I ended up finding certain guys I dated. Yeah. It's because I would dress look nice. Meanwhile, I was living in Matello. I would go like, you know, dressed up <laughs> nice, and they'll think like, oh, she's looking yeah. cute. But meanwhile, I had nothing. So I found that, that dressing can be part of you become successful. They always say, if life, life is not perfect, but your outfit can be perfect. So that's one thing I learned about fashion is fashion can take you to places. Interesting. And then you've got a closet the size of my house. 
<laughs> huge, huge closet. I think there's enough clothes to dress people like uh, in a whole country, like in a whole city or something. What's the most valuable thing in your closet? Handbags and shoes. <laughs> Handbags. What's the most expensive one you have? Uh, normally I try to minimize, so probably yeah. three thousand, four thousand, five dollars. Yeah, that's my for a handbag. Yeah. Wow. Do you do? But well some of it, it I don't yeah. buy it. That's why I'm oh. sad about it. <laughs> I, I I forgot about the. Hey, speaking of hon- speaking yeah. of honey people and sex, our kill is being sentenced today. <laughs> Did he? Wow, talk about digressing, eh? <laughs> our kill is being sentenced today. Oh, that's bad. You had it coming. Oh, <laughs> mind the pun he had it coming he did come a couple of times on kids no <laughs> oh, okay. that's why <laughs> crazy oh shit <laughs> you know, speaking of famous people you, uh, uh, that, now that we brought up Barra Kelly have you ever styled anybody famous me yeah yeah but I won't say it why, why not I mean it's marketing uh, it's my meaning yeah. But I don't like to be Like if I dress someone I'd rather keep it like that yeah, but why? Why? No, why? It'll get you your next yeah, client Exactly because people No will be like, I don't need next client It's a lot of work I know Fiscani in America Is dressed up Eminem She's dressed uh, up Akon And she's always You know posting It's a lot of work yeah. Dressing up someone Unless if their dressing Was shit And you're not and Yeah you're, you're not and, proud of and it And you're not yeah. proud of it Maybe Yeah No I won't disclose Because there's some tongue Did you dress to Iris? Why are you guys asking me that? No, I won't disclose anything. <laughs> Why are you guys asking you, me you that? You dressed her when she was showing her nipples, no, didn't you? No, Oscar, no, Oscar. <laughs> Oscar, I think this one is in love with Iris. I, I think so too. I think so, I think so, so too. So do have a wedding, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you, you, you got a very pretty smile. <laughs> now he's coming to me. Oh. We're still talking about a fashion. I'm still curious as to why you would dress up somebody famous and you won't share that. Why? Yeah. Because I don't. That's a lot of work, and I wanna. I wanna focus more. Yeah, but I, th- I think in America a lot of work means a lot of money. So why wouldn't you want more money? Mostly it's in Zambia. So is I the person dress, Zambian? Yeah. Oh, she's so, so confident in her work, dude. So no, I'm confident, yeah. but look, I make more money making videos instead of styling someone. So instead of me, someone coming so next, someone say, they are my friends. They're like mm. bitches, this and this. Okay, I make more money with me making style videos versus me. Styling someone, believe me. So that's why I rather do it. If my friends comes, are famous, they're like Beatrice, I want you, I'll do it. But I'm not gonna go and tell all oh, these my friends that I, I keep it. But in US, some people if they're having a wedding, I have. If you look it up on Google, you find Beatrice Mwansa on yeah. Google. I'll show her where there's got reviews and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody will get. But now I even start refusing unless it's a wedding where I know I can make shit tons of money. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, you wanna? No. You're done? Okay, cool. Um, speaking of business ventures, you're, you're into a lot. Cybercrime, we've spoken about what? Fashion, dating apps, dating rich men. All those are business ventures, if I, if I may. Um, personal business ventures. Personal business ventures, ventures yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about spaceship music. Oh, this Lord. is like. <laughs> it's inter- yeah. interesting the things that this lady does. Eh? She's got a record label. Let's talk about business ventures here in Zambia. And, uh, you own a record label called Spaceship Music on the Comic Not now. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what's, what's, the, what's the vision for this venture? I'm no longer with Spaceship. You didn't follow the drama? No, I didn't. No, nah, I'm no longer with Spaceship. What happened? But was it, was it yours? You started, you started that? I'm no longer. They started that and I got in as an investor. investor right. Yeah, but I'm no oh, but longer word, with Spaceship. It, it sort of looked like you started it, like it was your no. business venture. Okay, I got cool. into what's the, it. What's the story there? What happened? Uh, I lost a lot of money. I lost like over 100000 with that on that deal. $100,000 what? Yeah, uh, Kwacha. Ah, okay. So I was like, I got into it because I saw there was no... Pr- it's like, you know when you make business with someone you're an yeah. investor you come in you become business partner you're supposed to get money back but when the person you're working with don't think you're not getting home he doesn't think like he's just okay getting money without not taking in return that's why things go wrong right now yes i own a record label but it's bm record you can look it up on facebook right now i got nothing to do with spaceship right now so Those? anybody interesting that's under your record label oh, i wanted to disclose this at the right time it's the right time right it's now. Right time. It's the best mm-hmm. podcast, yeah. Okay, right now I got. I used to have five artists. Now I only have three. Okay, who are those? Uh, Delight, Messi, and Tilo. You know them? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know Tilo. I don't know that too. Yep. Delight sounds like a washing powder. <laughs> oh! I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> 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 Why 
Was it delight or daylight? Daylight. Daylight. Pamplowe sa chapa. Hey. Imwe seven and seven. Send it to me. Send it. Send it to me so that I'm pushing it. Yeah, so now I want you have like three, but I want to have less people because you gotta when you sign someone you gotta have a plan for them. Yeah. Now when you don't have a plan, they're just gonna sit there and think like, oh, there's nothing I'm doing. So I want to have less people. And right now I think I'm done doing anything with anybody. Just want to work with people that we are working with right now. Yeah. And see where we can go. Uh, Beatrice, it's been quite an interesting uh, interview. Like I, like I said, we've covered quite a number of things. And before we end this uh, episode. We've got a segment on every episode called That's the Trivia, right? And we ask you just, you know, a few questions to get, sort of get to know you a little bit more. Okay. And uh, on the Trivia today, we're talking mostly fashion. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll be giving you a few options and you tell me which one you feel is the best in the categories that I give you. Okay. Number one, the best Zambian fashion designer. Peter, my life. Fay designs House of Vol. Why didn't you put Kandaya today? Okay, that's the problem. I only know one name from that list. Who's that? <laughs> that's Peter My Life. Peter My Life? Yeah. Oh, Why serious? didn't you put Kandaya today? Yeah. yeah. yeah he's dressed pretty... us? Yeah, he's dressed us. I only know and Peter My Life. How disrespectful are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll blame Kaluba. Yeah, th- thanks, Sally. Replace, uh-huh. replace one of those three with Peter My Life. All right, cool. Uh, the cool. best Zambian fashion designer, Peter My Life, and Kandaya to House of Vol. That's the thing. I only know. Sure, you, you do not know <laughs> one. You, you don't know uh, Nkandayatu? Mm-mm. Wow. I think in our books, he's like number one. Yeah. 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 He's been dressing I'll share a couple of yeah. pictures that he's... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the most stylish Zambian first lady, Vera Chiluba, Maureen Mwanawasa, and the current one. What's the current one? Yeah. Tinta Hichilema. Oh, she's not even going to be the body of the current... Ah, okay. uh, you made a video about her. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, some of the things that you are seeing on my page, it's gone yeah. since Facebook. So if, most of the things you are seeing is probably 2020. Since Facebook is going through the merge of my page. So mm. the other things, is all gone where I made the video about that latest. But talking about Vera Chibabala for her. Uh, then the current one, yes, she dresses the part like Queen Elizabeth. She's stylish. Yeah, so. she's very stylish. So she dresses like an old woman. This <laughs> one? You compared it to Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Who is, is that? Said, does, yeah, he's asking that she dressed like an old woman. I since said, said that in my, actually, my video, she dresses like Queen Elizabeth. She gives me that vibe where she's mixed in colors. Like loyalty. Loyalty can be hold young. But of course, she's an older woman. You can't expect her to dress like, he, you know, jumpy, jumpy. Yeah, she, she's dressed very respectful, classy, and elegant. And that's what I like. Okay. Just to avoid any confusion, she meant royalty. <laughs> um... <laughs> The best dressed Zambian male musician, uh, Bobby East, Maki Two, Slap D. Hey, I should pay you. <laughs> the best Why? dress. Because yeah. both of them, I think they all of them, they dress very good. They dress quite well, eh? Yeah, like uh, I've seen Maki Two in casual, I've seen him in suit, so. Yeah. <sighs> now I'm just going to go with um, Picking Up Picking Doll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm gonna pick a doll. One, two, three, four, five, eleven, twelve. Okay, now maybe now I'll pick up. Maybe now I'll go. I don't know this one. Pick one. Okay, but it's, it's hard. Maybe I'll just pick one. one. Just pick one. I'm I'm analyzing the outfit in the past. Yeah. yeah. The okay. I'm gonna go with the recent outfit that I saw. Mm-hmm. The recent that outfit. I made the video about it, so I don't think you can find the video though because it's all yeah. smashed. And last time I included Bobby East in my video, that like, he dressed mm. very nice. Is that because you've also seen him naked? Huh? <laughs> what? I said, is that because you've also seen him naked? <laughs> no. What? You want me to see him naked? Uh, All right, moving one. on, moving on, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> the best Zambian beauty entrepreneur. Abby's Makeover, Shaw's Cosmetics, Ben's Hair Salon. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Ben just did my hair. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Makeup supplied by Ben. Ah, wow. Shit. Hey. Okay, so, this one. It's a tight. <laughs> it's a tie. It's a tie. Okay, oh, Ben you. doesn't do makeup, so he does hair. So definitely did my hair today. So yeah, I'm going for Ben. Ben. Ben says, so okay, cool. The best fashion Zambian uh, fashion influencer. Wow. Mutalemwanza, uh, Mainga Sanderson, Iris Kaingo. Uh, okay, you are giving the me the best people. fashion. Zambian fashion, 
Fashion influencer. My anger is designing my dress right now as we are talking. Wow. So I, uh, you guys are giving me in typical time. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna roll with my anger. Sorry, he's designing my right, dress. Cool. And I gotta roll with the people that I'm working on. That's, to that's your team. opinion. Uh, the best female Zambian model, Melba Shakaboza, Alice Musukwa, Petita Mwanza. Alice. Alice. That's no doubt. No way. But Petita also she has done very well. No way. Cool. Uh, best dressed Zambian female musician, uh, Mampi, the Queen Diva, Cleo Ice Queen, Tewela Kaira. I'm going with my Mampi. Yeah, we're going for Mampi. Nice one. <laughs> Beach has been real. It's been uh, quite a fun episode. I don't think we've had this much energy in a while. And uh, Elson, your Yo, conclusion? It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I have to ask you: Is the is the thing over? Yeah. You guys made it. Cool. Uh, how do you put Ntale Mwanza style with Mainga Sanders? Mainga designed things. No, no, what was the question again? Yeah, this question I feel like it's uh, unfair. No, no, no. What was the question again? Uh, fashion influencer. We're not talking about what they do, but how they influence. Design and fashion influences, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Chizung. Yeah. Chizung, which I need Peter, but I end up. Anyway, beat you thanks a lot for coming through. That's the podcast. See the next episode. Uh, remember, we've been at Keg on a Wednesday night, ladies' night. And uh, every Wednesday, ladies get to enjoy 25% off all cocktails and platters from 18 to 21 hours every Wednesday. So do make a date with uh, Keg every Wednesday, ladies. Oh, and the other thing. And the other thing. Uh, so the t-shirts are available now. All the t-shirts, yeah. You will be able to get them from Mark Ford. Right, that's the name of his store. Mark Ford is at uh, Lowenica Mall, Mall and East Park. And East Park. Yeah. Um, we will provide the phone numbers of. They'll be on the screen. Yeah, of the people that yeah. you're able to call. Go out in your droves. We're a family now. That's what's up, right? So to everywhere you go, let people know the podcast you listen to by purchasing the merch. <sighs> Jesus, I'm freezing my balls off. We can go. Okay. Okay.